Well, I hope you haven't read Shakespeare. First thing to do, let's kill all the lawyers. And I hope I will survive the next minutes. <laughs> I choose a title and everybody I spoke to this evening asked me, what will you talk about? And I can tell you that, that when I choose this title, I didn't know it. This title is Pa. It's a truism by Jenny Holz, an artist, an American artist I admire very much. And this title suits very well to the things I would like to explain to you. And you will see that a lot of points I touch, a bit from a legal perspective, have already been mentioned, especially by Vera and Dominic this evening. I come from another side and I focus very much on firms and their managers. So I'm glad I have glasses and a bit longer hair, no blazer, but uh, I have, I hope, uh, the assets for a little success. What we have gone through the last two years, at least since Lehman, November uh, uh, 2008, is uh, that we had to recognize that all the thoughts about self-regulation, about um, uh, compliant behavior of firms were very much deceived. And um, what I uh, now suggest is that you image uh, to yourself that you are uh, like in the film, the club of the dead poets. You stand like the headmaster on the table, look around in the large field of corporate governance and compliance, and I will pick up some plants for you and explain it for them. This is kind of bio biodiversity in another way, but you know these are also living uh, systems, and sometimes they function and sometimes they do not. The big question today, if you read the newspaper, is about regulation, is about standards, um, and everybody, this is a, a, an agreement we can uh, fix uh, once that this culture of recklessness we have observed has to be stopped. But how it should be stopped, um, there are different opinions, and a lot of managers already now again behave in a way like a re re rearrangement of the deck chairs on the Titanic after it hit the iceberg. With that, I want to say they don't see the importance of regulation, and I will explain to you why I do not share this opinion. When we go back to the year 2004, regulation was the unword of the year. Uh, everybody talked about regulation and said, oh, it's a mess, you shouldn't regulate the economy, uh, let business do the business, that what's exist. that's why it exists. And today, um, a lot of people have another perception. I think that the free market um, cannot operate without a highly regulated environment and enforcement is key. If you do not endorse and inform, uh, 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 enforce the regulations you have formulated, uh, you will fail. Um, we all know that you shouldn't believe pop songs. If you have been to California and know the, so the song It Never Rains in Southern California, it's a lie. <laughs> but there is another song uh, that is true, that you not, cannot buy love and you can not buy trust. You have to earn it. And when we see now the corporate environment, oh, I'm an idiot in technique, so, um, <laughs> then you see that it's very much um, in, um, designed by conflicts of interest. And I will focus now, now on the conflicts of interest we have in the subject of corporate governance. But I want to mention um, that a lot of business models, especially in the financial sector, are very much based on conflicts of interest. And these are more and more perceived 
as kind of corruption. If you imagine the case of Lehman Brothers, of all the securities that have been sold also in Switzerland by banks, these were advisors, so sold themselves as advisors, but at the end they were sellers, like car sellers, um, they wanted to sell uh, securities because they got kickbacks. That's a kind of corruption. Then what you also have in the corporate environment, especially also in the financial sector, is an anticipatory obedience. Um, that means that the behavior of the management as role model has a great impact on the behavior of the employees. And um, here you can take the case of UBS as well, who on the paper was a model of good corporate governance, of good corporate compliance. But what you had in reality was that the incentive system um, let the regulations, the internal regulations, uh, let them be void and null because people uh, didn't know how to behave in a proper way because the signs they had from the top management were contradicted, the, uh, contradicting their own uh, internal regulations. Then you have the phenomena that rumors about abuse of position by managers um, affect the behavior of the people working in organizations and it wasn't mentioned but I was I'm also a judge in uh, white collar crimes specialized in such cases and you here you see often the uh, argumentation of people who stand in front of the court th that they say you know if you had seen the management what they do what I did that's just small petty things, nothing what the others didn't do as well. And you see here how the system of values um, is undermined. Then uh, another point I would like to mention is we should stop, and this is for me personally a very important point, to think that greed is a um, kind uh, of intelligence. Being greedy is a sign of narcissism and mediocrity. It's not a sign of excellence. When we now come back to the aspects of um, corporate governance, uh, I would like to mention first the agency theory. This is a theory dating from the first publication in uh, 32. Uh, and it focuses, um, I want to read that, um, that the interests of the directors in a firm and managers can diverge from that of the owners of the firm and as reality shows and has shown, often do so. In the light of the financial crisis, many senior managers have not only shown lack of talent, but also a clouded judgment regarding their own interest and that what they consider the interests of others. When we now go back to the um, Swiss law, then it's interesting, and I've looked it up for this evening, that conflicts of interest in our legislations in the uh, Code of Obligation uh, governing corporations and other provisions uh, it's hardly mentioned one. And if we then go back to the international comparison, if we see we, where do we stand in Switzerland, I found a report by the World Bank where Switzerland rates 165 on the index of protecting, protecting investors. It's an overall ranking of 21 for doing business in Switzerland. So the importance of um, the, the paradigma of the agent theory is very important if we talk about uh, corporate governance. And here I come to the notion of compliance. Um, if we see the other institutional factors you also mentioned when you spoke, Dominique, about values, um, there we have moral norms, social norms, ethics and reputation. And here we come to the concept of behavior of compliance. 
which is a form of risk management. And now you see why I choose the title, protect me from what I want, protect the firms, but protect also the managers from what they want. Um, that means they have to manage their reputation and their legal risks. Mark has spoken about the reputation risk, I won't go into that, but I will uh, slightly focus now on the um, uh, legal risks. The notion of compliance consists today of three factors. These are the legal risks I mentioned, then the part of integrity, which says you do what you say, you say what you do, and you do it in a transparent way. Com a compliant behavior today is not only for the firms in the financial sector a license to operate. We have this notion since the 93, 94 in Switzerland, there was uh, the Schweizerische Bankverein formerly, the first bank who introduced this concept and this position, and today you find it overall in the, uh, in the economy of Switzerland and in the world as a such. And the third uh, factor of um, compliance is that what Vera went into is the respect for the context. And I would like to focus on that a bit from another subject. If you see the discussion about Swiss banking secrecy and tax legislation of other countries, then you see that today the expectation um, of the society is that tax law and tax uh, things are treated as like other things uh, and you have to respect the law also of foreign countries and this concept we had uh, in Switzerland about um, banking secrecy but also the way that we discussed about tax policies of other countries is that. So this respect for a context mirrors then in the respect you have uh, from the civil society as such and from other countries as well. Uh, I have here, I will not comment on that uh, further because of the time, a wonderful sentence by a judge I admire very much, Brandeis, an uh, important judge in the 1980-20s in the US and he speaks about standards. And when we speak about standards, then um, we, we have to focus on the um, fact that in our society today, it's not only the legislation that uh, defines what we have to do or what we shouldn't do, but um, it's um, a major impact now comes from NGOs, and intragovernmental organizations that define standards and expect firms and nations to fulfill these standards. So uh, the, the consequence of this um, development is that you uh, must see that uh, the, the legislation do, does not define anymore what you can do and what you shouldn't do. Um, from firms, I speak about the respect uh, for the context. Uh, is expected that they today um, take into consideration by their decisions, for instance, global warming, social consequences, etc., of their behavior. And if you see now these um, developments uh, with the suicides in um, Taiwan of workers in firms, so in the um, in the chain where you create um, services and products, you have to into take into consideration what would be the consequences for others as well. One example of a firm who does that consciously today is Siemens after this big crisis. Um, it went through and um, they have now, they try now to really live uh, after these words, not only focus, uh, uh, write that on the paper, but really do it. So let's 
go back to the developments I told you we have today, and Switzerland is touched as any other country as well. 60% of the uh, agenda of the Swiss Parliament is um, designed by developments in international organizations like the OECD or others, um, and we have uh, erosion of power uh, of of the political authority as we know it. We have soft law. Soft law is, with this word, are described the standards you have to follow. It's not written law, hard law, but nevertheless, this behavior is expected. Then we have other um, developments uh, Dominic mentioned at as well, I found this notion of the third cultural generation uh, very interesting. And you have um, this responsibility of business to, to society. Whoever has read Lumen knows that business economy is not the society. It's part, it's a system in the system society. So managers should not focus um, on the fact that they think they are not understood by us or politicians, they should regard themselves as part of a responsible so society. Uh, interesting also for you that we have a reactive process that means that standards often finish as law, uh, as national law. We have this, for, in, for example, in the fight against corruption in Switzerland since some years. Uh, corruption is a panel, is, a fo is uh, fixed in the panel code. And imagine uh, five, six years ago, you could de uh, uh, deduct from taxes the briberies you had paid. <laughs> Today, is, you cannot imagine to do that. So to finish, where is the power? I think, and this was mentioned with other words today as well, we need more upstanders, not bystanders. I think the most damaging was happen what ha that happens today is uh, an opportunistic behavior where people are quiet, do not stand up and say what they see and what they think. And then you, why I say that, I finish again with Jenny Holzer. People will not behave if they have nothing to lose. In the moment where they have an individual responsibility for their behavior, um, they will think twice about what they do or what they don't. That's my message. <laughs>